video on my Facebook feed. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now I can see me on YouTube. So I'll go ahead and I'll pin um, the sale details. I'm running a Father's Day sale this weekend. So if you're watching live, um, I am running my sale through tomorrow, the 13th at midnight. If you want to order something for Father's Day for someone that you know who fishes and you want something unique that they're going to love, then uh, now's the time for 25% off your whole order, $50 and up ships free on anything that's in stock in my store. And um, I also pinned the link to my website and the rest of my social media in the YouTube description. And I will I will also paste it at the um, bottom of my comments once I get the video pulled up. So I can um, share that with you guys. So hang on one second here. This doesn't want to work for me. So kids don't pay attention to me here. So I hope everybody's well. It is very hot here. We went out on the lake today, so I'm in like lake gear hang on the video isn't showing up for me right now let me see if i'm even live yep i am okay this is just being a butthole i'm not coming up on my side here for some reason so i'll just keep looking i don't understand why it's not coming up sorry i really need to get this pinned see all videos let me see if this will pull up nope Right now, there I am. Okay, click to expand. Yeah, well, you know, the duck lure makes sense that it would get it right. So, okay, I found the feed now. Sometimes it just doesn't like to show up for me uh, on certain parts of the page. So just bear with me, guys. I can't do this stuff in advance because if I do it in advance, it won't uh, allow me to um, I have to pin the comment at the bottom of the, I have to pin the sale details at the bottom of the comments and I can't see the comments until I'm already in the video. So thank you for your patience. Let's see if I can get this done real quick here. All right, there it is. So you should be able to see the detail of the sales pinned at the bottom now. So everybody might be wondering why I have pantyhose here, and there is a reason for that. So um, bear with me. Can you guys see me okay? Because I can't see the um, I can't see myself in the feed because my Facebook or my internet connection is kind of a crappy, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So um, I'm just grabbing a color that I didn't get grabbed. I guess is what I'm trying to say before the show. So I'm still in the room. I didn't go anywhere. It likes to be chunky on me for some reason. So I had to add, I have to start filtering it. Otherwise I get explosions. And if you're a lure painter, you know what explosions are. It's like when you're painting and all of a sudden um, it doesn't want to spray and then you up the air and then all of a sudden, boom, like all your paint comes out at once and it splashes all over your design. So you guys can't see my face very good on the, but when I'm sitting down, you can't look like. Okay. Um, so I'm going to try and see if this will help the problem by filtering my paint. And, you know, I think that this paint kind of just came this way when I got it. And it's a huge bottle, so I, like, don't want to really want to throw it away. And, um... I use this color all the time, so I'm like, I guess I better just figure out how to uh, filter it. So we'll see how this works. Okay, there we go. All right, you guys, make sure you share the feed tonight. I am going to do a giveaway at the end. So um, if you comment and share the feed, you'll get entered in the giveaway tonight. And that is going to be a koozie, a... Blade bait, half ounce blade, and a Caribbean shad. Um, this is similar to a shad wrap. These are my um, six to eight foot divers. So 
those are good for bass or walleye. So let's open up some pantyhose. So I'm just going to cut a section of this. I like, I actually have had these for like probably 10 years and I don't wear pantyhose, so I don't even know what I bought them for, to be real honest with you. But we're going to cut them. So if I can ever find a toe, I'm going to cut the end off and I'm going to put them on. I'm going to put it on the top of this and we're going to see if it helps. I've never tried this before, but I've been meaning to. Of course, my good scissors is missing because people like to take things from me without telling me. So we'll see if this even cuts your pantyhose. This is a kid. It does. It's a kid's scissors. Thanks, guys. My kids are home for the summer, and so now um, all my things are disappearing. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. So I'm just putting it right on the top and squeezing it shut. So hopefully some of the, like, the chunks that I'm having problems with will get filtered out. Um, and I have this problem with just a couple colors that I have. Uh, it's not like a normal problem. And I'll show you guys the reference picture here in a second, too. I see my pin comment went away, didn't it? I still can't see my video. I don't know why it does that. All right. There we go. There we go. I repin that. Sorry about that. I was trying to get my video to work so I could see if you guys could see me okay. Um, you have to thin paint out before you filter or it won't go through. Oh, really? I could do that. Yeah, we did catch them. We caught um, several bass and oh, my, my son got a walleye all by himself. He's pretty stoked about that. Let's see if this goes through or not. It goes through. Maybe you're using a different kind of pantyhose or maybe you're using more than one layer, but it went through. Um, I'm probably going to have to leave this color in here now because I wasn't really ready to use it yet, but I just wanted to see if it would work. But you know what? I still see chunks. I still see little chunks in there. So we'll, we'll see if I might need to double it up just to, you know, see if it work, if it's even working. So video is super clear. Yes, the YouTube video is always clear because I have a Logitech. Uh, 920 webcam and then when I use Facebook it's just my it's just my phone my I, uh, I have an iPhone XR so the picture isn't quite as clear but you get a little bit closer up on Facebook than you do on YouTube um, I can get closer with the YouTube video but you wouldn't be able to see me and there are a lot of people who disagree about how I should be doing it whether I should be closer up to my lure or I should be closer up to um, or if I should leave it. And so far the consensus has been just leave it. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I try to show you my progress as I go and explain what I'm doing. This is definitely not something you're going to enjoy watching with the sound off. So I wouldn't bother. It's not, it's definitely not, um, sound free, friendly learning. If you're trying to learn. All right, so we're doing a mallard duckling on this wake bait, and I'll show you the picture real quick here if you guys want to see what the reference photo is. So here is my reference photo. Isn't he cute? Look at this little guy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we're going to try and do that tonight. So I'm going to do a little bit of – it's almost like hair or fur texture because they're so fine. Um, when they're babies like that, it's actually almost like fur. It probably is fur. And then the feathers probably grow as they get older. I'm just guessing because it's that's what it looks like. So um, we're going to do some yellow, some off-white, some brown, and then a little bit of black and orange, a little bit of orange on the sides of the beak. So it should be fun. We'll see how it turns out. Should be fun. Is everybody still there on Facebook? It's very quiet over on Facebook. You guys are making me nervous. Like maybe you're not there anymore. Uh, fishing's been pretty decent uh, where we live right lately here, but it was so busy. Like the lake was so busy. It was so rough. There were a lot of people out. And um, is everybody still there? Somebody comment on Facebook or I'm going to be lost. 
You have never done it that way, but that way would be easier than what you do. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not going to bother like filtering it, you know, like into a container. I'll just leave the stupid pantyhose on it and filter as I go. I don't know like if it'll work, but I think so. Actually, um, I have a friend who kind of suggested it to me, so I should give him a little bit of recognition. All right, so I am just putting a little bit of um, Wicked Opaque Flat White on here. This is pre, I pre-reduced um, this because I use the white all the time. So I just keep it in like a container I bought from Hobby Lobby or whatever that came empty. And I just put it, you can also use old paint bottles that are empty and just clean them out. And then reuse them like that where you just buy bigger bottles of white and then you just pre-reduce them into a small container like this and then you don't have to do it every time you put white in it's already reduced and if you're going through it fast enough it shouldn't be a problem to pre-reduce it it just depends on the color you're not going to want to do that with like I don't know colors you never use you know I do it with like sepia usually and moss green and black and white and that's about it okay so I'm just going to dry this to make sure that nothing sticks to it when I go to do my other colors. And we're just going to start doing some fur layers and shading. And what I'm probably going to start with is like some brown, some brown. And I'm going to, um, I don't, are you guys still there on Facebook? I'm not seeing any commenting. So I'm, I'm hoping you're still there, but I don't see. I hate for this to be like nobody's here. Yeah, I wasn't getting the comments. Sorry. Hello, guys. Thank you, Brian. Creature baits like soft plastics? Is that what your question is, Jake? All right. Hello, Paul. How's it going? Long time no hear from. You'd love to see some pinks and chartreuse on a four-inch or Lake Superior trolling. Alan, head over to my website because I have that exact color combo on a trolling lure on my website. So ask and you shall receive. I already have them. Um, but I don't know if the exact bait that you want is there. If it's not, you can always PM me and I take, I do do custom orders. So uh, I'm happy to paint whatever you want just message me. so let's pull up my little reference photo of my cute duck and we'll start by doing some browns so i'm going to grab this brown i have here and this is a fan brush and i'm just going to use this to create a fur texture there's a few other things you can use but this is probably the easiest thing to get your hands on you can thin these out by cutting some of the bristles off but usually what i do and this gets easier the more like the longer you paint for is turn your air down. I have quick disconnects with um, a, it's a GMAC um, valve by Grex. And it allows you to turn your air down on the fly. You don't need to use your regulator on your compressor. So I turn it down to what I would say is about 15 PSI. I usually run about 30 or 35 PSI. Uh, probably more like 35. So I'm just going to go through here and just do a bunch of Okay, so all you're going to do is just place your hand brush against your lure really close like that. And you're going to spray right through the bristles. And then as you pick it up, you're going to see that you have these little, I'm sorry, the lighting is so hard on this YouTube video, though. When you get up close, it just doesn't really, doesn't really like that. And then, um, so you've got all these little fur lines. So I'm going to do a few of these and then I'll show you the progress. Like once I get some progress made. Okay. So anyway, it's supposed to be real hot here this week. We're supposed to get down to like, or up to like a hundred two days this, this coming week. So ugh. hot, hot, hot. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Like on the top mostly is where you're going to do the brown. But I'm going to layer, so we're just going to do, like, 
all over some brown hair. Um, and then I'll layer back over it with some lighter colors just to give it some dimension, if that makes sense. And you can use other colors. Sometimes if you mix in some oranges or some um, other colors like that, you get like a little bit more dimension too, even if you wouldn't think it would look good. Oftentimes you're going back over it with another color or you, you can always blend it with some browns or uh, other similar colors that will give it that will tone it down. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. It's just something you have to practice. I wish I could give you all the answers when it comes to color layering and stuff, but it's something you have to practice on your own. Um, if you want, you know, if you want to um, get really good at realism, you know, need to learn how to layer um, colors and how they blend over top of one another. And that just takes a lot of trial and error. So that's what you got to do. So try making fur with all different kinds of colors. You know, you can use just about any, any color. And, um, and just keep layering until you get to the color you want it to be. So this is what it looks like now. So you've got little fur specks all over. Okay, and those are spread out a little bit. I'm not watching the comments right now, you guys. I'll pop back into, I can see the YouTube comments, but I can't see the Facebook comments because I'm trying to, here, I'll pop back here for just a minute. And then I'll come back to my, I'll come back to my um, picture in a second. I know I need like 4 million devices to do this. I should probably just grab like one of my kids tablets for, I just don't have any more room to put any more devices in front of me. I got a, a laptop over here and I've got like a, I've got an iPad over here. <laughs> my phone is on a, is up here. So I'd have to steal like a kid tablet to do any more. It's amazing when the weather gets better how much less they are actually on them, which is good. Little man caught a good walleye all by himself. He was pretty excited about that. He's getting better. He's going to be six in like a week. And he's um, really starting to get more patient. And it doesn't hurt that it's like the season where, or it's the time of year where the fish are biting. They have a lot more patience when they're actually catching things. <laughs> okay, so we have brown flecks, you know, all the way up and down. So I'm going to come back with some other colors here, and we're going to do some more blending with some different colors. So in this other, I'm going to leave that brown in there because I'm going to come back to it. But let's go ahead and do like some, this isn't really orange. This is like, so this color is sunrise yellow. It's actually more yellow when you spray it than it looks. Let me try it. I'm going to try it. It's like a yellowish orange color. I could use golden yellow, which I think I'm going to do instead, actually, because that's so transparent. So let me go. I'm going to grab my golden yellow real quick. It'll just take me a second. I changed my mind. Sorry. I got it. So this is golden yellow. And this is... um a wicked color so you might have to reduce this one just a little bit um because it's not a detail it's not a wicked detail color i think this might be clogged so oftentimes the wicked colors if they're not wicked detail um they're a little thicker so they come out more like the consistency of ketchup or something and that's too it's too thick so just add a little bit of, that's 40-30 reducer, Creatix 40-30. And then I just stir it with a little disposable paintbrush. I hate sitting and painting. I just don't like it. Okay. My chair never stays where it's supposed to. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure this is spraying well before I do it. I'm going to turn my, again, I'm going to turn my pressure down. So I have two airbrushes hooked up. I could probably use a couple more, but I only have two. 
So I have a different valve on each one. Um, let me check the comments again to see if you guys have any questions. Hey, Richard, are you at, still at Yellowstone? No, it doesn't come with feet, actually. Thanks, guys. Hello, hello, Erin. Everybody share the feed if you can, and please check out the sale. I do have a 25% off sale through Sunday. All orders will ship on Monday, so you get them in time for Father's Day. It's a great, unique gift. And I am doing a giveaway, so share the feed to get entered in the drawing. And comment, say hello, so that we know you're here and that you shared. All right, so I'm just doing some yellow for spots now. This is golden yellow, so it's got a little bit of an orange tinge to it. And all I'm doing is holding this fan brush like with the bristles spread out. I'm just pinching them in between my finger. Just spread them out, and if you get, if the spot you're on gets kind of wet, just wipe it on a paper towel real quick, and then just rearrange them, and come back down and do it again. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I have not painted one of these yet. This is my first one, so um, I'm sure it'll be fine, but I don't know if it'll be fantastic. I can do mice pretty good. I got that down, but I haven't tried really anything else with like a fur texture. And this is a duckling, hence the fur versus the feathers. I don't even know how to do feathers. That's like whole other level. I probably wouldn't bother. I'd probably just do the colors and call it a day. So maybe I'll do a, I'll, maybe I'll try and do a loon. I would probably have to hand paint like most of the uh, pattern on the loon. But if you guys think that would be a good idea, I could do some of these on a loon. But I bet these catch fish like nobody's business. I'm gonna try one for sure. These would, I mean, they would nail it for pike. Oh my goodness. Take these up to. Um, we have Lathrop State Park in Walsenburg, which is just south of here. There's a good pike and musky lake. Whoops, I just spilled that. It'd be a fun one to try there. You don't see too many ducks swimming on that lake. <laughs> they know better. They're like, no, nah, no thanks. Not a good idea. But there's lots of pike there, so I bet that would be good. This would be a good bait for pike, or but anything really. Yeah, I don't know why this one doesn't have kicker feet, but they didn't come that way. I know there's like another one that's actually got a bill on it for waking, but this is more just like a top water. And I haven't tried it yet either, but I'm gonna try if I can get one clear coated. Hopefully, I can try it. Um, either this weekend or next weekend, but the ABA um, has a tournament next weekend, so Chris is going to be running that. And then um, it's my son's birthday, too, and Father's Day. So <laughs> I don't know if I'll make it out. So here's some yellow now mixed in with your brown. So they're kind of just, like, popped on top of each other. I wonder if I get super close, if you can kind of see it. On YouTube. I don't know. That thing hates my lighting. Okay, and um, so now let's go over all of this with some off-white. So I'm going to mix some sepia up with some um, white, and we're just going to kind of make like a tannish color, and I'm going to do some layers with that. So I'm just layering away, and then once I get like a solid base of layers, then I'll start to go for the pattern, and I am can just kind of get freehand the pattern. I don't have a stencil to get those markings down. I think the markings are probably like slightly variable from one duckling to the next. Um, and then there's that stripe across the eye for the mallard. And um, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of white in here and then I'm gonna start adding drops of sepia until I get to 
the color I want it to be. But you know, my sepia did not claw, it didn't, um, I, sometimes I get like little tiny specks of dried paint, it seems like, in my gun and then it kind of locks up and you have to put so much pressure on it to get it to come free that you end up splattering your paint all over your, your piece. Well, anyways, um, the pantyhose that I'm using right here on the top <laughs> to filter it seems to be working. So that's good so far anyway. So this is just kind of like a light tan color and I'm going to see how it looks when I spray it. If it needs more brown, I'll come back and have more brown and we're just going to do some layers. I don't know if anybody else has commented because this isn't updating like it's supposed to. So my apologies. I'm not ignoring anybody. Make sure you guys check out the sale if you're just joining us. Um, all the details are posted in the description. And also, uh, yeah, the description. I'm trying to pin it onto the bottom of the con. This is too light, probably. Well, no, let's just stick with it. A bass blew up on the bird. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Pike with ducklings. I've seen videos of pike eating ducks. Hello, everybody. Thanks for the stars, Matt. Appreciate it. Oh, yay. Vacation. Enjoy your time there. I'm jealous. Yeah, for sure. They'll, they'll bite. They'll eat the babies. So I'm just, again, this is like not the most exciting thing to watch because it's just a slow progress, but it all comes together at the end. So just doing some very light tan over top of the brown and yellow. I didn't show, I haven't showed the reference photo in a few, but I'll show you guys the reference photo in just a minute. If you're just joining us, make sure you share the feed on your page or in your groups and also comment to get entered in the giveaway. I'm giving away a crankbait, a blade bait and a koozie to a random viewer. I will choose the winner with a random comment picker at the end of the show. So make sure you share the feed and comment to get entered. And then um, if I can't get it drawn during the show, I'll just post it on my page at the end of the uh, after the show and um i couldn't get it to work last time but it worked after i got off of the video it worked of course you can go different directions with these two and vary up the you know like the angle or whatever of your brush so that you have um intersecting furs and it gives it some more texture if that makes any sense to you It'll give it a little depth. Depth is the word of the day. Okay. So there is one side. I'll show you one side real quick here. I got to dry my brush off. So there's one side with the tan. I, I know it's hard to see it on my on my uh, webcam, but especially over the white, it's kind of hard to see it. But these are going to have like a cream white belly, probably. So I started with a white base. Oops, that's brown. <laughs> Wrong color. I lost my pink comment, didn't I? No, I didn't. Never mind. Do you guys see very many animals yet, Richard? Have you guys seen like anything interesting worth reporting? Is it warmer than it was the other day where you are now? So I'm just still putting some layers of um, like tan fur on here. And I'm probably going to do some shading. So by shading, I just mean that I'm going to take like a really watered down version of this brown and then maybe also this tan. And I'm going to try and like define like the pattern a little bit. 
And um, you'll still be able to see the fur. The goal is you can still see the fur through the dating. So we'll see how it works out. I do that with my mice. Um, you have to shade it to get like, I don't know, to get it to look, it just helps make it look natural or to get to the color you want it to be. So I'm going to have to turn this to get onto the top of the head here just in a second. So again, I'm just doing the same thing I did. The same thing I did on the other side and just um, layering some light tan layers on top of here all over the place. And this brush gets really wet after a while and you kind of have to clean it. Otherwise it'll start to, the paint will start to rub off on the lure a little bit and it'll look really sloppy. We don't want that. Okay, so now I have a mess of different layers of fur, uh, brown, yellow, and some tan or off-white colors. So I'm going to do some shading. Um, so let me pop back to my reference photo on here. And hello, Kevin. And we're going to do some shading. So um, I'm going to take like a sepia first and I'm going to go down the back of the head. And then it has almost like, um, I'll show you, it has like, you know, a swirly pattern they're so cute see the swirly pattern so we're going to do that with the brown and i'm going to see how i if i can pull it off freehand um and then it's got like a little bit of a blackish brown coloration to it and some maybe mixed in yellow so we'll go back and we'll add some more layers after that but we're going to go right down the nose here and i'm just Carefully putting down a little bit of paint at a time, like that. So you can see I'm just going down the head there. So it almost goes, yeah, just right over the top of the head. And then it'll go down the back also pretty much all the way to the tail. So I'm just going to shade. I need to turn my air up just a little bit for the shading. It's still, I feel like I'm getting this sticky still, but I can't tell if it's just because I left it sit for a few minutes. I think I'm still getting some angry little, just sticking a little bit. See what I mean? So my sepia, for whatever reason, um, I got a bad bottle and it's got some dried bits in it and I tried to strain it, but it's not really cooperating still. There we go. It helps if you clean off your tip of your needle. I'm not used to tip dry much because I, I don't usually use water-based paint much anymore, but. Okay, so this little duckling's all curled up because of course they show you what it looks like when it's standing. So I'm going to kind of do the best I can to shade the areas that I would think are shaded when they're not like this. And I'll show you progress as I go. I don't really think a stencil would work well in this situation anyway because um, the lines really aren't very defined to begin with. They're kind of random. So um, so we're just going to freehand it. This is my slow progress, OK? So far. And then once I get this rough outline made, I'm going to do some more shading with like a darker fur color. And then we'll shade again later. But this is the beginning, so. Okay. 
So there's that. Okay, and you I know on the YouTube video it's really hard to see. So if you pop over to Facebook, if if your view is not fantastic on YouTube, you can pop pop over to Facebook. And you might be able to see this a little bit better. Again, I'm just shading um, the kind of pattern on the duck. It just has a dark pattern on it. I don't know how this pattern translates into what the duck looks like when it's grown because they're not similar at all, but If you've ever had baby ducks, you can probably tell us. Feel free to share your knowledge. Those look both pretty pretty close to the same. Um, just comparing these two sides to see if they're about the same. Okay, and then we're gonna add some brown, some uh, brownish black fur. So I'm gonna add some. Um, so there's one side, and then here's the other side. So that's a close up. <clears throat> And there's your close-up there. So I'm going to add some black to this, and we're going to do um, some more fur texture. And I'm going to mix the brown and the black together. I put way too much black in there, just so you guys know. I'm probably going to dump it. Add some more reducer and a little more brown. Who sells the duck? I think I got it from Sugar Tit Custom Lures. I think I don't know if he still has them or not. I got them a while ago. Um, I thought they looked interesting, and I never got around to painting them until now. <clears throat> I'll pop back over to the comments here to see what you guys are talking about. If you're saying anything or have any questions, make sure you guys are checking out the store. I don't do 25% off sales, but maybe a few times a year. So um, if you are looking for a deal this weekend is a good time okay making sure that's coming out well and i'm going to set this up a little bit hello a side fin stencil uh, no, probably not, because they don't really look that way, I don't think. Um, and you can't really see the, the wings on a duckling anyway, because they're, like, fuzzy. So, I don't, I don't think it would really work. I don't know that it would work, really, the way that you'd want it to. You set 100 buffalo, and that's so cool. That would be so sweet to see. Very cool. Um, ducklings are usually white belly, gray, yellow, tan mixture, depending on their age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I have the picture of the duckling. Um, and then the females just have, uh, they don't have the markings like the mallards do. I just meant, I don't know how their markings as a duckling translate into what their markings look like when they're an adult. Like, I don't know how they more from this coloration into... The coloration of a mallard at the um, the full grown size or whatever is what I was trying to say. Maybe not quite so clearly. Um, let's see here. Mother bear with three cubs. Ah, oh, so cute. Best love ducklings. Kind of sad in a way, but you know. I guess it helps helps us, right? A little bit. Okay. I saw a video of like this pike eating a baby duckling, and then the mom was just like, "What the heck? Where'd it go?" And I was so sad for her because her poor mama lost her baby. So sad. You guys are laughing at me, aren't you? 
I don't blame you. So I'm just doing some darker fur. That's about it right now. It's pretty time consuming and not very much fun to watch, but I thought I would try something different tonight that I hadn't done before. So you're stuck watching me paint for, for the rest of your night, unless you want to take off. Please do check out my sale and share the feed. I am doing a giveaway if you are just popping in. Share, share, share. That helps get uh, the word out to uh, anybody who may not have heard of us or may not know what we're up to tonight. And maybe they're bored at home after a long day of fishing and want something to watch besides some stupid crap that they watch all the time. All right. So anyways, this is it. It's coming along. So now you can kind of see the, the darker fur mixed in with the lighter fur colors. And then I'll do some more shading once I get this stuff down. And probably put a little bit of um, white or off-white um, fur in between. Some of this stuff just to give it a little bit of um, a mixture of different colors. As always, when I get done with these, I usually tweak them a little bit from whatever it turned out like on the show. Because I'm usually like, well, this could have looked better or that could have looked better. So the final product might be slightly different than what I did in the show. Sounds like somebody's at my house. Okay, so we're getting there. I promise. We are getting there. Almost. Okay, so I think I'm pretty good. At, I'm going to check the top here just to make sure that all my fur is not going in one direction and I'll show you where we're at right now. I don't want it to look like it has a comb over, but uh, a mallard comb over. All right. I'm going to throw just a few dark hairs in the lighter areas. Then I'll go back over with some of this with like a lighter fur texture. And oh, that looks pretty freaking good actually. I like it. I don't know if it really looks like the duck quite yet, but it's getting there. So just a few dark spots in here. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far. It looks so much lighter um, on the video streams than it does in person because um, the reflection of my overhead lights. Here's the YouTube video. Let's see if I can get it to focus on my hand versus, there you go. That's a much better, you can kind of see what it looks like now. And then on, and there's the top. So on the top, you can see kind of how it, um, I don't know if I'll be able to get that there, that focus a little bit better. So you can see kind of how it goes there. So I'm gonna put some, um, I'm gonna dump this out I'm thinking. And then I'm going to put in some yellow to shade a little bit on the face. And I think I'm going to stick with this golden yellow because, um, and I may even just thin it a little bit so that I don't get too much of it in one spot at a time. Oh, that was the tan. Okay, I was trying to figure out what color I had in there. 
So this is golden yellow, and I just need like a drop or two. Thin it out, and you can even throw a little bit of transparent base or a little bit of 40-30, um, which is a balancing clear that I can't find. Here's, here's transparent base. Honestly, they both are fine. They do kind of the same job in this case. It's just a clear paint. It just kind of looks, you know, like a light, like a milk color in the in the jar or whatever you want to say. But it'll just make your your paint more transparent. So this is just kind of like an orangey yellow. Okay, so I'm sorry, now I can't see my comments over here gonna pop up. Thank you. Thank you. I think it looks okay so far. So I'm gonna check my comments and then I'm gonna pop over to the uh oh yeah, it definitely makes your paint more transparent. All right. Three gallons of Gatorade, yeah. Right, but like not camouflage from predators when they're older because then they have to be attracted to a mate, right? Makes sense. I just wonder how their colors morph like over time or whatever, but that makes sense. You know, they would want to be camouflaged better when they're babies because they're more at risk because of their size. That makes sense. Okay, back to my picture. My oh, baby, baby duck. Okay, so the, the head is pretty yellow and I'm gonna shade the belly a little bit too and then just the lighter areas in general. And then uh, I'm not too worried about hit, I'm not too worried about getting the beak because it's gonna be black and orange. So we'll just hit that up at the very end and whenever I paint it now, it'll just get covered up, so. And I'll come back through this yellow part with some. Thinned out white in some areas if it's too yellow. It's not bad though. So right around like the face is where they're the most yellow. And the rest of it is kind of like just a slight bit yellow with white mixed in. And I'm going to put some white fur back over this to get a few white flecks in there. But that looks pretty good, I think. And so the cheek here should be, I'm going to probably have to uh, blend some of this with a little off-white, which I have in my gun on the other side here. Because the face isn't really supposed to have a whole lot of color to it so I'll probably dull that down just a little bit if I'm trying to get real accurate here but we'll go back over um, with this just very light tan color which I just dropped my stir stick so I'm just gonna this is back flushing so if you stick your finger over sometimes this pops off if you stick your finger over the um, this one has a needle guard because is my Iwata and you just pull the trigger back it'll just bubble up on the inside of the cup and it'll stir your paint for you just make sure you don't have so much paint or you do it so hard that you splatter it everywhere so I'm going to shade the face a little bit with this just to get rid of some of the <clears throat> the fur I'll probably come back over that with a little bit of yellow because I kind of screwed that up. Just trying to lighten that down. Dull out. I'm just dulling out this fur a little bit because it's not supposed to have a lot of fur right there. And then these areas in the middle. I'm going to put a little bit of white fur just mixed in to give it a little bit of, um, there's some mixed in in general and like all along here. So we'll just do some fine spots. 
I'm getting way too detailed here. You can tell me to stop if you want. Be like, it's fine, stop. I do that though. <laughs> I want it to look like as good as possible, so I just never never know when to stop, kind of. And sometimes um, close is, is, you know, you can mess it up if you just keep going sometimes. It's better to just stop. Stop when you know that it looks pretty good and call it good instead of continuing and, and screwing it up, which I've definitely done, as have pretty much all. This has got way too much air. It's part of my problem here. It's better. So these white um, fur specks or whatever, you could definitely skip if you wanted to. It's just like that little bit of extra or whatever. Probably not necessary, but I don't know. It kind of blends it in a little bit. And then I'll come back over probably and do a little bit more shading. He looks pretty good though, I think. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's close. It's good it's enough to fool a bass, that's for sure. As if that takes a lot, right? So let me clean this out and I'm going to shade a little more yellow. Well, let me do the belly first. Sorry. I almost totally forgot the belly. So I'm going to pull this out of here and just shade the belly with this tan color because it's not exactly white. It's more like an off white color. So it's just like an off white color. I mean, you can't probably see it really even. And then I'll clip it back in. Do a little more yellow on the face, a little more shading of the black brown. And then I'll throw some, I gotta do the black uh, stripe across the eye too here before we're done. Okay, so let me wipe this out. I'm just spraying this with water in case you're wondering what I'm doing here. If your brush gets really dirty and you've got paint dried in there, you can use um, alcohol, just like um, isopropyl alcohol or whatever that you get from. Oh, I dropped my stir stick. Oh, wait. Here we go. I have another one. Isopropyl alcohol that you can get from um, wherever. That helps clean out any. It'll clean out any dry paint that you have. You might have to scrub at it a little bit with like a, a paintbrush or a paper towel, but it'll get out any um, extra dry paint pretty easily. I don't recommend taking your brushes apart unless you have no other option. Like you back flush paint into your trigger area like in here. You should never really have to take it apart. Just take the nozzle out. You know, just unscrew the front and clean that and you should be good. Take your needle out. Make sure you have all the dry paint off your needle. But disassembling the whole brush um, as much as you want to do it, it's not necessary, and it should be done as little as possible. Mine almost never get taken apart unless there's a clog and I can't find, I can't find it. Then I might have to take it apart just, just so I can figure out why it's not working. Because occasionally I've gotten paint somehow like in the plunger mechanism and it's stuck. And in that case, I have to take it most of the way apart just to get to it. So I'm going to do this line um, pretty freehand. And it's just gonna go across the eyeball. So um, from the top of the beak to the eyeball, and I'm just gonna freehand that. 
So everybody hold on. This could get messy. I'm going to come back to your comments while I'm getting ready for this scary moment. So you want a decent amount of pressure, but like don't make yourself crazy. And you want to get really close to the lure and move quickly. So you got to commit. Okay. All right. I don't think there's any new comments since five minutes ago. At least I can't see any new comments. Okay, so I got across the eye there from the beak, and then I'll do the beak, the black part of the beak, too, in a minute. I'm just lightly shading the top here in black. Okay, and I'll probably lightly shade all of these areas just a dusting of black okay because it's more of a brown black than it is a brown I'm not sure if anything's coming out at this point. Okay. Just so I get this line also to um, blend in with the area of the head or whatever where it attaches, you're going to need to shade a little bit of black there. And then on the top of this beak, it's going to be black. So color it black along the edge here. And then just leave that little bit of the mouth at the bottom. Just leave that little bit of the mouth at the bottom white because we're going to make it orange. And I'll probably use stencil to, to help me with that one. And I'll show you what I'm going to do here in a second. So the, the top is black now, okay? And then I shaded this all a little bit darker, right? So it's closer to the actual color. Looks well, pretty good, I think. I'm gonna look at my picture one more time here to see if it's, see if I'm way off on any of these markings. I have to double check. So they're not perfect, but like, Again, this duck, this duck is like sitting down kind of, so it's going to be pretty tough to get it perfect. I'm going to say it's close enough. Close enough for me. Okay, before I do something I'm going to regret, let me clean that out. And then I'm going to do this bottom of the nose, and then we'll put some... They're almost black, the eyes, so I'll probably just put some black. I don't think, I don't know if these are four or five millimeter. I think they're four millimeter. Um, so I might have to paint like the eyeball black to get it to um, work or whatever. Sorry, I'm getting orange right now and that's why I'm saying it up. I gotta grab my orange. So this is just, um, detail orange so we're gonna have to do some white and then the orange probably to get it to look orange so I'm just gonna grab a random stencil this should work this is just a random stencil that's got some different shapes on it that I made so I'm gonna just throw a little bit of white um, in here and then I'm going to go across the edge of this beak right here um, with some kind of a curve 
kind of a weird little shape they have going on there. So I'm trying to kind of duplicate it a little bit. It's almost like it goes down towards the nose, a little bit like that. So I'll show you what I did in a second here. It's just a, such a tiny little area that you can barely even see it. I'm assuming the whole underside of the beak is orange. I can't tell by the picture, but it's probably a safe assumption. So we'll do that too. Okay, so. And like, this is already white, but I'm just going to make sure that like, it's good and white. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. Now, also, I always I try to remember to say this, but I don't always get to, I always remember um, that you should always wear a respirator while you're painting. I usually get hoarse after my show because I'm breathing this stuff. I don't. I don't ever paint without a mask, so I recommend getting like a 3M respirator with um, vapor cartridges and a particulate filter, and um, also running a ventilation fan. This is my ventilation fan with my filter, and um, it vents to the outside of my garage. So now, be you only have one set of lungs. Remember, remember to take care of them. Okay. All right, and then change your filters like, you know, your vapor filters are supposed to be changed every 40 hours that you use it. So make yourself a reminder on your calendar every, if you paint 40 hours a month, then, you know, make yourself a reminder every month to change them. Okay, so let's do this orange. This one is really transparent. So the detail orange is really transparent. So you're probably going to have to do a couple of layers to get the, the darkness you want it to be. And you got to be careful not to overdo it because it'll start to run really fast too. And then once I'm done with this, then, you know, you could paint feet on the bottom of it if you wanted to like freehand feet on the bottom of it. But like, I don't know. I'm not even very good at drawing. I know some of you are like, oh, whatever, but seriously, I'm not. I draw at about a fourth grade level at best. My kids are impressed, but only because they're five and seven. Drawing, I was like always decent at painting and um, photography, which I don't really do anymore. Um, but I was never very good at drawing. So here, here is here it is coming along. The little orange beaky. You guys can see that. So I'm gonna have to do a few layers to get it to the right color. And then, so I don't have any four millimeter black jewel eyes, so I'm just going to paint some black if I don't have some already, which I very well might. I think that the mouse, this mouse that I'm, I'm going to be doing some mice, by the way, I'm working on custom orders. I believe that's a four millimeter eye on this mouse wig. So I usually have some painted black eyes that are left over from when I do those. I'm gonna be doing some frogs too. So if you guys have any frog color requests, now is the time to ask. Otherwise I'll probably do them all the same color. And it'll probably be like something natural and common. Realistic. Um, but if you do have a custom order that you're waiting on, I am working on all those right now, slowly but surely. I 
I hate this detail orange. It is so hard to tell if you're spraying anything. I'm just kind of dabbing up the excess because I jacked it up. Okay, let's just stop. quit while we're ahead right now. And I'll clean this out and then we'll get some eyeballs. I'll come on back to the feed here to see if anybody has anything to say. Make sure you guys check the sale out, please. Check out the sale before the end of the day on Sunday. See if there's anything you want to order. I will ship everything on Monday that gets ordered over the weekend. So you should have it in time for Father's Day if you want to give somebody a unique gift that they can't find in stores. I don't know if I have any black ones, but we'll just paint some if not. I don't see any. So we'll just grab a... couple silver ones and I'm going to need these anyways so um, usually what I do is I just take a scissors and I cut a section off of like a sheet of a plain you know silver or whatever whatever I have a lot of I'll just cut a section off and then I'll put some black paint in there and I'll take a clip of some sort you know whatever kind of clip you can fit on there um, these are nice these are just some alligator clips from Amazon. And I'll just clip it onto the paper like this. And then I'll spray a coat of paint and then I'll just keep going until I have it dark enough. And then once they're dark enough, you can just use them like you would. The only thing is you have to be careful because you know that it's acrylic paint. So it'll scratch off if you're not real careful when you're putting them on. And um, since the, the eyes themselves are pretty slippery, you know, like the they're made out of epoxy, so it'll scratch right off if you're not careful. So just do enough coats until it's so you can't see any of the holographic film underneath it. I'm going to make sure it's dry. I super glue all my eyes because um, the adhesive on these are, it's just not very reliable. Sometimes they don't stay on. And then um, I use Illumi UV. So when I'm dipping my lures, oftentimes um, they'll just start to slide off. I don't dip, I won't be dipping this lure because it's a, it's a jointed lure and you can't really dip them. So I just put a little bit dab of gel control, um, super Loctite gel control, and you can put just a teeny tiny, um, you probably can't dab in the center there, and it's very, this is the best super glue to use for eyeballs or anything with lures, because lures are so small, it's just, and then you just pull it off and stick it on like that, and I'll do the other side real quick, and then we'll show you our finished duckling. And then I'll make some more of these, and I, I don't have a lot of them, but I have a few. And I will post them for sale as soon as they're done. If you guys have any colors you want me to do, I mean, you can message me if you don't like what I did. Or if you just think that some other color would be better where you live and you want one. You can do a variation if you want. All right, so let me see if anybody has any questions before I spill. Bullfrog, I could do that. So there it is, the duckling. Mr. Duckling in the water. Mallard duckling wake. Let me see if I can get this. There you go. So there's a lot more texture up, you know, in person. It's a little easier to see the texture, but I think everybody kind of gets the idea. So hopefully you guys like it. Uh, thanks all for watching. I appreciate you sharing the feed, and I will run the comment picker after the show and post the winner of the um, giveaway. And you guys have a wonderful night. We'll see you all next week, hopefully. Uh, 
I should be here. So, all right. We'll see you later. Thanks, guys, and have a great night. Bye-bye.